everyone. It's uh, Zach at uh, Feel Free to Argue. And uh, some of you may recognize the color of the wall behind me. <laughs> um, I'm back at my sister's house. Uh, her husband uh, died yesterday. And uh, so I started driving back to Ohio last night made it uh, just shy of Indianapolis and then finished the job today. I think I'll just kind of give you some general thoughts. Um, I'm afraid that, you know, me being here, I'm, <laughs> I'm drunk again. Um, that was odd having my family together haven't spent that much time together, just, just the four of us, nobody else. Um, it's a very rare occurrence for us. And so that was very interesting. You know, to a certain extent we, we fall into old roles. Um, I think it's odd the way that happens. You know, when your family gets together you know, and some of these old dynamics start to kick in. Another thing that I've been just kind of thinking, sitting down here in the basement, my, uh, my sister and, and her, uh, her husband, they did all the work down here, and this was a completely unfinished basement when they got this place, and uh, it, it's still an unfinished basement, but they did a lot of really good work, and they had a tremendous start on it. Um, I mean, it's now mostly finished. But, I mean, there's, you know, there's some places where they, you know, didn't finish putting in the ceiling tiles, and, you know, there's just, like, little details here and there that are left undone, and they're just thinking of what kind of a potent metaphor it is. Just wonder how many things that Jim had undone at the end of his life. I know even while I was here, there were things that he wanted to do, but then he was busy kicking things off of his bucket list while he was feeling well enough, and then when he wasn't well enough, he wasn't well enough anymore. I imagine some of us will have time to do just about everything, but a lot of us will just be cut down. We won't know when it's happening, when it's going to come, and we'll be totally surprised by it, because it'll be much sooner than we expect, which is a strange thing to think about. It could very easily be me. Or you. The sheer randomness of life sometimes can be very frightening. And yet, I was reading, reading, it's, it's odd, a book on tape is kind of a, a weird experience. It's uh, sort of half reading and half listening. Um, but I was listening to, I got another book on tape. This was a rather large and completely unabridged one. Um, Ron Suskind's uh, The Way of the World. And I have to say that even only having made it through half of it so far, probably a little bit less than half, seems to be a work of staggering genius. Um, I remember seeing him on Democracy Now! when the book came out, and they were mostly talking about revelations in the book, about, you know, what the administration knew, what it should have known, what it did know about uh, weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, and that was the big bombshell in the book. But I think it actually, it, it's almost unfortunate that that bombshell was in the book. Um, 
because what's there is actually so much more amazing than any far too commonplace revelation of government misconduct or prevarication. It's a it's an amazing meditation on the title, which I thought was pretentious when I first heard it, The Way of the World. You know, you're going to explain the way of the world to me. But it does. And it's amazing the way he goes from world leaders to everyday people telling stories and finding so much meaning, so much significance. There's a, there's a withering portrait of Bush in there. Um, and it's the, the first time where I feel like I understand Bush as more than like a cartoon cutout character, as, as something to hate. And I, don't, I don't admire him or like him any better for, for, for understanding him just because I think what he's done is so abominable. But I do feel like, for the first time, I really have a kind of a deeper understanding of him. So I, I just feel like I, I, I know him now. Um, and not just by his deeds. I feel like I know him as a human being. But he does that all over the place in this book. Um... And I'll probably be telling you s different stories from it, um, you know, as I as they they wrap up in the book, because I, I kind of don't want to do a disservice to any of this stuff. I know you know talks about Bush, but he also talks about an Afghani student and the tr problems he has with uh, his American hosts. Um, he talks about uh, a seasoned lawyer and the person she represents in Guantanamo Bay. He talks about uh, a Pakistani child of privilege who's working for a privileged government think tank who gets uh, mistaken for a terrorist and brutally interrogated and then released, but changed. I think it's going to be a meditative few days for me. Anyway, um, just wanted to give you all an update and kind of let you know where my mind's been at. And uh, well, I'll be talking to you some more. This is Zach Elliott at Feel Free to Argue.